Hey everyone, guess what? It's Spencer Hawes, the founder of nichepursuits.com. Here I am back on my own podcast, recording both video and audio. Uh, I thought it would be really interesting to come back on my show and talk about what I've been up to lately. And as weird as that sound, I come back almost as a guest on my own show. And to give it a smooth transition here, of course, I've got Jared Bauman uh, with me. He's still kind of going to be hosting and I guess maybe asking the questions that maybe I didn't know I needed to answer, right? Um, so if it was just me behind the microphone, I, I could talk, and but Jared's going to make sure he asks the right questions that maybe you as the Niche Pursuits audience would, would want to hear. And so with that, let's, let's do it, Jared. What do you say? Welcome to your own podcast. Yeah, thank you. It's it's good to be here. It feels comfortable. You know? I was going to say, is it good to be back? It's good to be back. It actually is. It actually is. The chair is still warm. The microphone's still hot. I think it all works. You're, you're, I think we're going to be good here. Yeah, I had to dust a few things off. <laughs> uh, it's been a little while, but we'll make it work. Absolutely. And so, you know, I, I wanted to come back in and I'm going to let you jump into whatever questions you have. But the big question is, why am I not? the mm -hmm. host of the podcast. Uh, why am I not showing up as much on YouTube? And so I, I want to share that and what's going on kind of behind the scenes of niche pursuits and just what I've been up to lately. Yeah, well, there's uh, obviously been a transition. Um, yeah. You know, people have had to had to deal with looking at my ugly mug for the last couple months. And uh, I think that not only is there a good conversation to be had about just informing people about what's going on and, and why you aren't on the podcast and the YouTube channel right now, but really the reasons why and what it really means for niche pursuits and, and what it means for you and the business, you know, ventures you're pursuing. And I th actually think there's a lot to learn for all of us from it. So it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, you know, so I, I'm not quite sure where to start other than it's been how many months now, Jared, you've been hosting the podcast. Um, a few months at least, right? I actually think it's probably five or six months now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's probably five or six months. I mean, uh, well, let's um let's I think maybe let's do this. I think this would be fun. We, obviously, the the podcast has been in a um we we've we've transitioned to you um uh, hosting this for almost a decade and then now joining the podcast. Maybe catch people up on the evolution of niche pursuits as both a website and a podcast and I mean, we don't have to spend 20 minutes on it, but right. there definitely have been people that we've picked up along the way in terms of listeners. And even for anyone who's listening, who never has even heard you, maybe just joined over the last couple of months, would be great to catch people up on niche pursuits in the history. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. So nichepursuits.com was started back in uh, 2011, I think officially, right? Even though anyways, uh, officially is when it started in 2011. I kind of been building some things up uh, before then, but it really started as a way to document my journey. Mm -hmm. I had just quit my job um, because my niche websites that I had built, you know, for the previous few years, finally were making enough where I could quit my corporate job. And that's when I started nichepursuits.com is to basically say, hey, I'm building these niche sites. Here's what I'm doing. I just quit my job. And it's really, it was my personal journey. Um, I really honestly didn't look at niche pursuits as a, as a business per se. It was just, I felt like sharing. I no longer had coworkers. Um, I wanted to interact with people. Uh, it was great to you know, meet other bloggers um, in the blogosphere and really uh, just share what I was doing. So it started, um, you know, sharing uh, how I was building niche websites. I started Niche Site Project One, and I've now done four niche site projects, mm -hmm. right? And so that's how Niche Pursuits started as a personal blog. Uh, and then the podcast started in 2012. Okay. Um, and I, you know, ha had done every single episode since then, um, which... I, I honestly have lost count, but it's... I don't know how many there are either. I was actually looking, trying to look that up quickly before we started the day, and I... I, I it's over 200. It. I think it's less than 300, uh, somewhere in there, you know, two to 300 episodes. Um, for a while, I was doing it once a month in the, in the early days, which was, you know, a good cadence. And then I beefed it up a few years ago to once a week. Uh, 
And, uh, and then it's still doing once a week, of course, but, but now you're, you're doing that. And so that's kind of the history. Um, but over the years, you know, I launched uh, Longtail Pro mm-hmm. and certainly having an audience on nichepursuits.com helped tremendously with that. Um, I've launched other software products, currently Link Whisper. And so having this audience has really helped in other business areas. And what's happened over the last couple of years is I'm starting to rank and get more traffic from Google for keywords on nichepursuits.com. I'm making some affiliate commissions. Um, I'm getting more users of Link Whisper. That's like, huh, I've got a real business here that I didn't necessarily mean for it to start out as a real business, but now it is. So how can I focus and scale it even more? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And believe it or not, part of the the decision reason I decided, you know what, the way I can grow it even more is if I remove myself as the face of the business. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're here today. Yeah. I remember the first, I was actually thinking about it um, uh, in kind of thinking through this, this interview here, this podcast here. I think as it turns out, the first time that I started following along in the niche pursuits was I think I heard you on a podcast interview with Pat Flynn. Yeah. And you yep. had just, I think, or recently launched Longtail Pro. Yeah, probably and, so. And I don't remember that what year that was. It might have been 2013 or 2014. And so have been paying attention to the podcast since then. But yeah, I mean, there, there's a long history here uh, uh, in terms of not only the podcast, but obviously the website and the niche site projects. And I mean, just a huge amount of content that's been put out in the last decade. Right. And I, you know, to give people an idea, I have written over 600 blog posts myself, (laughs) you know, on the site. Um, I actually went through earlier this year and deleted a lot of old blog posts, Mm. some maybe like a hundred plus. So, so I actually don't know the true number that I wrote, you know, but it's over 600 for sure. Uh, Many of those were documenting case studies of, Hey, here's how my niche site's doing. Here's what's working things like that, of course. And so, yeah, I've put a ton of uh, my own time, you know, writing all that content, building the audience. And uh, the other big thing is emails, right? You know, I'm sending out two to three emails. And a lot of those are like blog posts in and of themselves, Mm -hmm. managing the Facebook group, um, you know, interacting on blog comments, that used to be huge, uh, especially in the early days. Yep. Um, I'd, I'd almost spend more time more time responding to blog comments than I did writing the blog post, yeah. right? There would be hundreds of blog comments. And now with social media, it's more happens on Facebook and Twitter and, and things like that. Uh, but that was one of the steps that I made to uh, r- alleviate my own time and hence hopefully be able to allow uh, the business to scale is I removed blog comments. Um, uh, that, yes, that, I that happened maybe a year ago. Um, maybe a little longer, but so there's no longer any uh, comments that happen on the blog. I, I actually miss that because it was a lot of great interaction. So I don't get that immediate feedback anymore, mm-hmm. but it still happens on like my Facebook group and I still interact with the audience there. Uh, but I just don't get the direct feedback on the blog post I just wrote, uh, for example. Uh, and then the other thing, um, to, in order to remove my face, as a limiting factor, I can't be the voice of the podcast, yeah. I felt like. Well, good. That brings us, that catches us up. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned removing yourself a couple of times now. So, I mean, should we just tackle the decision you made earlier in 2021 to remove yourself from, from this very podcast and, and YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So part of the reason, um, of course, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to think of ways, how can I actually scale this business? And it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, a lot of people might think if they have a podcast, well, one way to scale this is if I do more episodes mm-hmm. um, or if I um, go and am a guest on other episodes and try to get more listeners. And those are all very good things, right? If all you're trying to do is build a podcast. Mm-hmm. But if you, I, I felt like if I wanted to build a much larger business, and the key here is if I ever want to sell this business, mm-hmm. I can't be the name and the face um, of the business, right? Um, A a potential buyer, if they come and they see, well, Spencer does all the work 
He is the face of the podcast. He records all the videos. He writes all the blog posts. He writes all the emails. If Spencer quits, there's no business, right? And so I'm strategically trying to think of ways. How do I remove myself so that others are doing everything I just mentioned? Uh, and so someday I could sell the business and it would be easy for somebody, a new buyer to walk in and go, this is not reliant on one key person. Right, right. This is this is a well-run business. Spencer is not, you know, the the critical person here. Uh, and so that that is really the reason is to remove myself to scale more and eventually uh, have the ability to sell the business itself. It reminds me of I'm sure you've read the book. It's a popular book that gets referred a lot. Um, Michael Gerber's E Myth and E Myth yes. Visited. Yep. And it's a bit of a cheesy book, right? Like, you know, it's definitely old school, but it's so valuable. And I think the, the number one point he always continues to bring up and just drive home is you need to be working on your business, not in your business. Right. Yep. And that's abs absolutely right. You got the, you know, in a, in the, I think you use McDonald's or, a, you know, a burger franchise throughout that book, right? You've got the, the burger flippers, right? Right. That are doing the day-to-day -day operations that has to happen. But if you're the owner and you're flipping the burgers, <laughs> you're not growing the business. You're not looking at the no. high level view and understanding how many burger flippers need to be hired. And, you know, do you open a new restaurant and yep. do you improve these, the burger? <laughs> you improve the burger. Right. And so I, I actually refer to that a lot of, I need to stop flipping the burgers. Which, which is now what I'm doing for you. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, and you're doing anyway. a better job than me, if I'm honest. So thank you. For uh, that. I don't know about that. Well, we can get into that later. We can get into that later. Did, I, I mean, the podcast is one example yeah. Um, any other examples of other areas that you're removing yourself, you know, I mean, are we going to just, is, are we going to just yeah. stop seeing Spencer and in, in everything? You still send the emails. You still send the emails. I know I that you still write a bunch of blog content. I know that, but other areas, maybe you've removed yourself or tried to limit so you can focus on bigger things. Yeah. A couple of areas specifically on niche pursuits is, um, I am writing less content. Um, you know, I still certainly am writing content. Um, but less, and I'm have I, I'm hiring more writers uh, to write content for nichepursuits.com. Um, you know, I'm I'm treating it just like any other sort of niche site business that all of the listeners know about. Is I'm mm -hmm. finding lots of great keyword opportunities that niche pursuits could rank well for, and I'm outsourcing that content. Um, you know, if I've got a thousand articles that I want to be written, that's going to take me ten years. Yeah. Right. If I were to write all that, or I could hire writers and get it done much quicker. Right. Right. And, and hopefully scale that business. So uh, certainly I'm writing less content. Um, and then YouTube is another big one uh, as well. For a period of time, you can see I do have a lovely background here. Um, about a year ago, maybe two years ago, I started looking at uh, there's a lot of really big YouTube channels, you know, in income school, mm -hmm. you've got Matt Diggity really doubling down. Uh, you've got Doug Cunnington doubling down on YouTube and, and yep. lots of other people that are growing great businesses on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, that's, that's an area I haven't really focused on. If I can um, produce some high quality YouTube videos, um, I can really scale that. Uh, and so I did, I, you know, for a few months, I produced some, some sort of keyword rich YouTube videos that ranked well and started getting lots of views and that model works. Um, and I could have scaled that, but then again, at the end of the day, after I invested in microphones and video and nice backgrounds, I was like, what am I doing to myself? I, I, it's a lot of time to produce a high quality YouTube video. Right. I will just say that, right. um, that, yeah, maybe it takes you only 30 minutes to record that, but all the, the other the, stuff, the prep work is a couple mm -hmm. of hours. The post, you know, operations is a few hours. Suddenly I'm spending half my time just doing YouTube. And again, I'm flipping the burgers and I'm the face of the business. Two things I don't want to be happy. Yep. Yep. Um, so, so blog and, and YouTube are, are two other big areas for niche pursuits specifically um, that I'm trying to remove myself. Uh, we can start talking about other businesses that I have as well um, if we want, but, but for niche pursuits, that's kind of those well, areas. I, I think the big burning question then is, I mean, on paper, it makes sense, right? Like yeah. start to remove yourself. But I think 
what everybody's up against, whether you are the face of a business or even just looking at removing yourself from being the editor of your niche website. Like in brass tacks, when, when push comes to shove, um, it goes, it, it's, it's very hard to pull off, I think. Um, what, what caused you or what gave you confidence that it was a good move to remove yourself per se from the podcast or the YouTube channel? Like, you know, was there trepidation there at all? Was there concern that the numbers might nosedive, that the interest would die off, that it would affect other areas of your business besides just the podcast? I mean, that's, that's gotta be a feeling that most people have as they're considering something like that in their business. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, let me maybe also answer a question you didn't ask and this one as well. Um, another reason, if I'm completely frank, for stepping back from the podcast and doing YouTube is part of that is I've never felt like I'm the greatest podcaster. I'm not the greatest voice. I know that. Uh, and also, it's not my favorite thing to do every day. It, just being 100% transparent. I don't wake up in the morning. We're going to have to edit that out, I think. (laughs) Other than when I talk to Jared. (laughs) There we go. Okay. Never mind. Keep it in. Keep it in. I don't uh, wake up excited to sit down and interview somebody. Right. It's just, you know, I feel like I have to perform, put on my show face and be excited and happy. For some people, you know, it's almost like showbiz. For some people, that's their thing and they get jazzed up about um, talking to people and recording audio or video. That's just not me. I'm more of a behind the scenes guy, you know, a little bit of an introvert, I guess, in terms of, you know, I like to be looking at the analytics and kind of pulling the strings Mm -hmm. um, from Mm -hmm. above rather than than be in the face. And so um, just looking at my schedule, right? I'd have two or three podcast episodes scheduled in a week sometimes, and I would dread it. I'd wake up and go, oh, I just, I'm not excited you know, to, to record this. That's a key point to make too, because we, you know, we spent the first half time on the business side of it, but you're right. Like the, the, just the interest level side of it at some point, it has to be taken into consideration. Right. And, and so I, I, as, as um, you know, my, my business has grown in success in, in, in all areas, right. Not just niche pursuits, but other areas, right. I, I have a little bit of the luxury, I guess, to be able to start looking at things and saying, do I love doing this? Mm-hmm. And do I really want this on my schedule? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I, you know, kind of the conclusion I came to is I don't love doing it. I wish it wasn't on my schedule. Is there a way to make it so I don't do it and it's not on my schedule? Yeah. Right. And Did you so, ever consider just shutting it down? Uh, I, the, I, that thought has crossed my mind. Man, uh, for sure, <laughs> but, uh, but I, ne- I could never do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Usually what's happened is I've taken breaks there. Mm-hmm. If people do look at my history, there have been times where I, for those reasons is just like, I feel overwhelmed. I don't love doing this. I'm going to take a break for a few months and just not record any podcast until I free feel re-energized and excited mm. uh, and do it again. That's happened a few times, um, but never considered just, Hey, this is shut down and never going to do it. Um, and so having come to that conclusion now to finally get to your question of, was I nervous about doing it? Did I feel like, uh, maybe listeners would stop listening that sort of thing? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I, you never know what's going to happen, uh, when you get, uh, when you have a major change. Uh, and so when I brought first Jake in doing some guest Mm -hmm. hosting for me, um, and then brought you in. Um, I was definitely looking at the numbers, waiting for feedback and wondering, you know, hey, are people going to stop listening? Did they think this is the Spencer Hawes show instead of the Niche Pursuit show, which I want it to be the Niche Pursuit show that really highlights the the guests. And um, I I will just say that uh, even though I wasn't excited to perform and have things on my calendar, I really did love building all the relationships with the the people that I interviewed and usually after the interview I was always really excited like man I'm so glad I connected with this person Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so I do miss that still uh uh but I have to weigh the the pros and the cons um but as I looked at the numbers um I'm both excited and a little bit sad uh, that the numbers have not changed. Um, you know, people don't miss me and that's a good thing. (laughs) 
it, it makes me a little sad in some regard. But from what I can tell, all the stats are saying people like Jared at, at least as much as at me least. <laughs> being the host, right? Um, the, 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 the podcast listens are, are just as great. Um, the YouTube views may even be up a little, maybe that's partly because, because of consistency. Um, we've got some great interviews, uh, recently, but they're performing well. Um, and nobody's really emailed me or gotten angry and said, Hey, we are, are going to quit listening. So I think Maybe it's just the, uh, you know, like Google gives you, uh, when you, you know, update an old post, they give you that, what do they call the freshness factor? Right. Maybe a little, a little bump. Maybe, maybe we're just getting the bump from that. You know, we got the fresh face factor, the freshness here. factor or something. Um, yeah. I, I think that there's, I mean, I would imagine a tremendous amount of, you know, trepidation, but also, I mean, it's something that you have crafted from the ground up, you know, and, uh, I think I don't think I'm overreaching by saying to some degree you're gonna shake a little. Like I already know this, but you know you're a bit of a of a godfather in this industry of, of building websites. You know, in terms of um, one of the people who made this an industry, if you will, rather than just a uh, little pat, part-time passion project. I think you know, and I think a lot of us over the years have grown to know Niche Pursuits as a household name. So there's a lot behind it, whether it came to be in your decision or not, you know, I'm glad you have it still running because we get to have a lot of really amazing people on that are, that are doing really great things. And I think a lot of people are still getting to learn from it, which is evident in, in the data. You know, it's not nose diving. There's just a lot of value that people are bringing to the, the podcast. And, and, and like you said, it's, it's really about the guests. I think at the end of the day, that's yeah. really where the value comes from for, you know, I think we could both agree on that. <laughs> so, right. You know, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, as far as just, I'm one of the original guys. I don't know that it has anything to do with that. I'm anything special other than for whatever reason, I sort of stumbled into this industry and was blogging about it, you know, early on. Um, that, that's all there is, you know, that, that has to do with it. Um, the other thing is, even though I'm not the face of the business, I certainly am still the one directing the entire business. I'm, I'm maybe even putting more time into niche pursuits now than I was before, which I know is a little weird uh, because kind of the whole point was to remove myself and I have removed myself, but now I'm spending more time working on the business than I am in the business, right? It very much does go against the grain, right? I, I mean, I, you mentioned it earlier, but it's worth doubling down on the idea that growing your business is really maybe starts more with what you need to take off your plate than what you need to add to your plate. Right. Um, you know, and, and it, it's um, like, do you have now six, nine, 12 months into this process? Is it bearing fruit for you? Do you feel like it's really causing the business to grow? Do you feel like it's making you happier? Some of the, the kind of metrics you talked about earlier, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's going well. Um, and it is, you know, bearing fruit. You know, the, 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 the podcast and the, and the YouTube channel is, is one aspect, mm -hmm. um, but the other one is the, the content aspect, right? What's ha actually happening on the website. Um, and that it, it's certainly done well, right? Over the last year or so. Um, I've made a lot of tweaks over the last one to two years, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Things have been slowly coming into motion in terms of monetizing the site better, utilizing my email list better. Um, and then, like I've said, I'm doubling down on more content. Uh, and um, that's certainly the, the new content that I published over the last 12 months. I track that specifically. How are those new articles doing? And they're doing well. That's, that's bringing in a lot of new traffic. And so that's, I, I'm tracking basically content I did not write you know, that have written by outsourced writers. Mm -hmm. um, and that is certainly bearing fruit, making money okay. and increasing in traffic. And so that's also part of it um, of, I guess, just one sort of strategic move that I made as well, that yes, there's a lot of opportunity in the podcast and in YouTube. Um, it's hard to scale those without being the face of those. I, I'm doing my best to, to maintain and kind of grow. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I expect to see like rapid trajectory growth in YouTube, for example, right? Um, unless I hire somebody specifically to do YouTube, which 
if I ever get that figured out, maybe I will. Um, but a, a process that I have figured out is scaling content uh, on, you know, that's just what I've always done with say, my that's, sites, that's, right? That's part and parcel to what you do. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just replicating that process. And so what I'm getting at is that I'm, I'm bullish on, uh, on content, on written content, right? Um, a lot of listeners may see others that, it, and I recognize this, I recognize a lot of old bloggers that I sort of came up with that they're all in on YouTube now, like yes. all in, mm-hmm. right? Like daily videos or weekly videos or, and they don't blog anymore, right? Um, I, I'm still very bullish on blogging, on, mm-hmm. on written content. And in a way, I like it more because it's easier to not be the face, right, uh, of written content, right? I, and I'm not even ghostwriting. I'm, I'm clearly saying, you know, this is written by somebody else, yeah. right? But I can scale that much easier than I can scale YouTube, for example. So what are you working on? You talked about nichepursuits.com yeah. and putting a huge push on there. Are you working on any other projects? I mean, I think the maybe uh, a side question to that is, are you are you going to be continuing to start, you know, niche sites per se? Or, you know, I don't want to get into the niche site versus authority site question, but <laughs> other right. websites, people just classify it as that, um, yeah. you know, like where are you, where else are you putting your time besides nichepursuits.com? Yep. So uh, obviously, I got Link Whisper, uh, my software tool in building internal links. It's doing well. Um, it's been a great business, uh, and so I, I put some time there. Um, I don't know if it makes sense, but you know, to give people an idea of the size of the team, right? I've got actually full- I was going to ask you about Link Whisper because yeah, Link, Link Whisper's got a full time developer. It's got two customer support staff um, and uh, one affiliate. Uh, manager, mm-hmm. um, sort of marketing manager, uh, and then and then me. So the team actually mostly runs the business. I've removed myself mostly from Link Whisper, um, but I kind of do a weekly call and you know I'm still involved, obviously, in, in pulling the strings there. Yep. But um, it's gotten to be a little bit more of a mature business in terms of is about two and a half years old. And so it's running well, it's kind of got a well-oiled machine going there. And so it doesn't require a ton of time, but that is definitely where I'm putting some of my time. Yeah. Uh, And then of course, um, you know, I've got other niche sites that I'm working on. I bought um, a couple of sites about three years ago Mm -hmm. um, that I'm working on selling. Um, And then I have, um, a couple other niche sites still in my portfolio that the long-term vision would be to sell those uh, as well um, to basically not have any other sites other than maybe there is one other niche site other than, you know, other than niche pursuits. I've got one other niche site that I could see myself holding on to long-term trying to grow with the eventual exit at some point, you know, of course. I, I don't know when that is, but but most of my other projects, other than Niche Pursuits and Link Whisper, I fully hope and expect to be out of, sold completely in the next, you know, call it 12 months. So you're pairing away and focusing, doubling down on, on what you, I guess, know best and do best. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, continuing to operate. Uh, we've got Link Whisper. We've got niche pursuits and we've got a couple other sites and slowly, you know, kind of moving past that. Um, maybe talk a little bit about why you chose what you chose. So why out of everything you had in your stable, you had podcast, YouTube, website, uh, Link Whisper, um, uh, uh, you know, I think you were kind of alluding like maybe four or five, six websites. Like how did you end up landing on nichepursuits.com as kind of the the future of your time. And um, I just think it'd be fascinating to hear how you chose and prioritized. Yeah. So also just to, to go back a little bit more to give people even a bigger picture, I, I've been um, sort of scaling down my businesses in hopes of scaling up, you know, the actual size of the business for, for a while now. I actually wrote a blog post um, at the beginning of this year that that is called that is called scaling down in order to scale up and so if people ah. want to read that um they they can go read that but even earlier than that you know i've been in 
involved in lots of businesses, call it like, I, I almost always have like 10 projects going on at once. You know, I don't know anyone else who has that problem at all. Right. Said no one. Everyone in, who's listening has that probably that problem. Especially in this community, right? <laughs> yeah. we, we all have like five websites we're uh -huh. working on, right? And so I've yeah. always had the six or seven websites. I was very involved in Amazon FBA from 2015 to 2018. That's right. That's right. Right. Uh, and mm -hmm. I made the decision in 2018 to completely get out of Amazon. So that time period, that took a lot of my time and effort. Mm. Um, I launched many dozens of uh, products on Amazon. Um, I've also had Table Labs, AMZ Image, um, Longtail Pro, other software products, right? And so I've been doing Amazon FBA, software products, half a dozen niche websites, plus niche pursuits and the podcast and the YouTube channel. Uh, and all along the way, um, you know, I have never really put a ton of time and attention into niche pursuits. I just, you can't when you have that many things that I just named going on. Uh, and so when I sold the Amazon FBA business, I sold Table Labs, um, I sold AMZ Image, I've sold a, a few other niche websites. I've started to finally kind of pare down. Mm -hmm. and so I've only got a few things. And when I look at those few things, I look at which of those has the most potential be to become an extremely large business. The decision was pretty obvious that, mm -hmm. that niche pursuits was that business because one, it was already performing at or above many of my other businesses. Yep. Despite the fact that I'd probably put the least amount of time really in a way into it. It, I don't know. It, I, I hate to say I put the least amount of time because when you add up 10 years of work that I've consistently put into it, I put the most effort into it. Well, maybe, businesses. maybe it's never been the number one priority. It's never been the number one priority. Maybe that's what it is. It's always that, been a priority, but never the number one priority. That's a great way to put it, right? It's always kind of been number two. Number right? two at best, yeah. But it's been, you know, number two or number three for over Forever. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Right? Where Amazon FBA was number one for three years, yep. right? You know, yep. table labs and software, my niche sites have been number one, right? And so um, I look at it, it's got the highest domain authority, right? It's, it's very authoritative. It's got these amazing links. It's got this great base of content, 700 mm -hmm. articles. It's got this massive email list, yep. uh, a large follow, you know, I have a 30,000 member, not 25,000 member um, Facebook group, mm -hmm. right? Even without really trying, it's got you know twelve thousand subscribers on YouTube. Um, it's got this really great core business that is earning you know money already, and it's like, huh, what if I made this my number one priority for like two or three years? What would happen, <laughs> right? And so that's that's really um, the decision making process I came to. I I looked at the other businesses, right, and most of them were sort of niche sites, right? That like, like on the yard, you know, it, if it can earn 5,000, 6,000, $7,000, right. That's great. And maybe I could, if I really doubled down on some of these niche sites, they, they could do 20,000 or 30,000 maybe, right. Maybe. Right. Um, but when I compare them to niche pursuits, it's like, I really think niche pursuits could get much bigger than these others could. It, it's just a fascinating question. I end up asking a lot of our guests a question kind of like that. Like, how do you know when to pick from the sites you have? Uh, how do you know when to pick whether to go kind of all in on one or, you know, uh, should you go all in on one site or start multiple sites? When do you start the second site uh, along the journey of having the first site? When do you like this kind of topic? It's just fascinating to hear someone like you talk about how you picked it, why you picked it, when you picked it, you know, how it made sense because um, it's a tough decision to make. Yeah, it's really, it comes down to traction, at least in my case. It's like, you look at your, your businesses, which one has the most traction? Which one's um, growing or doing well without it being a number one priority, you know, in mm -hmm. my example, right? 
And uh, that, that really kind of made it a no brainer, you know, sort of the, the, the breadth of the business. Like I said, it's email list. It does well in Google search. It, it's got a Facebook group. It's got this real audience, um, you know, and it just, so, so traction, you know, if people are looking at lots of their businesses and they're seeing that one of their businesses, they're putting a ton of time into, and it's not earning as well as they'd hoped. And they've got another little business that, boy, it's just kind of taken off. It's I'm got dumb. traction, right? Like maybe you should focus on the one that's got traction. Mm -hmm. So without doing a deep dive on kind of the future of, of nichepursuits.com, I'm just curious, you know, um, you talk about all the opportunity, like what, from a broad perspective, what type of areas is the site going to expand into? What type of, uh, you know, what type of content is, is this big push? Uh, what type of content is happening uh, behind this big push you're making? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the niche that we're in is, is massive, digital marketing, right? Call it digital marketing. Um, it's it's huge. And if you look at some of the competitors, right, like even if you just look at WordPress, like look at WP Beginner, um, they're getting like a million visitors a month, right? Mm -hmm. Just talking about WordPress, right? And so um, Niche Pursuits um, is going to talk more about, yeah, WordPress. What are the best tools to, to use for your, your WordPress site? Or what are um, other software reviews maybe, right? Like what are the best um, content, uh, tools that are out there, right. Um, things that are still very much focused on kind of building niche sites or affiliate marketing, but just, um, scaling that, yeah. um, there's hundreds of different tools. There's hundreds of different ways that you can manipulate WordPress or optimize your website. Um, so some of that is, is that, um, you know, I do expect that the content will be a little bit broader as well, right? We, we, I already cover a little bit of like more side hustle ideas, like what are some online businesses, you know, that maybe aren't niche sites that you can get involved with, right? And, and covering some of those, those areas, uh, it really just is a massive market. Yeah, the make money online topic yeah. is also, yeah, also huge as well. I know we had um, Kyle on a couple uh, a couple of months ago, or I don't know, maybe months ago now, and he had built a website that really was focused on that whole make money online. And he built that site up to be huge. And that was just a segment of the broader scope you're talking that niche pursuits can pursue. Right. And, and, you know, to give people an idea of how big I'm, I try to think, I don't expect I'll ever get there, but I try to think that way sometimes, right. Is, um, you look at, somebody like the penny hoarder.com, mm -hmm. right? They, there's a little bit of crossover with niche pursuits, not, not necessarily a ton, right? In, in some, some areas, um, which is a little bit like what you were talking about with Kyle, right? Um, a lot of like how to make money online, interesting side hustles. Um, the penny hoarder talks a little bit more about like how to save money and how to invest right. a little bit, right? The niche pursuits maybe isn't going to get quite as much into, um, but the penny hoarder, um, they really scaled that content there. Kyle Taylor, I believe was the, the founder there. Um, it sold, I think as maybe a year ago for $110 million, right? It's just a blog. Um, you know, of course they've got an email list, right? Um, they're getting most of their traffic from SEO. Mm -hmm. uh, and I look at sites like that and I think, well, why not? You know, why can't a niche pursuits just double down and scale? Mm -hmm. There, There's an audience there. There's people searching for those things. Why shouldn't it be? Um, why shouldn't they be landing on a website that is run by somebody uh, that's actually been building online businesses for yep. 10 plus years? right? Even though I'm not going to be writing every single piece of content, I'm going to be directing that and, and hopefully making sure that it's valuable content there. And so that's kind of the vision is like, there's no way I'm going to build a 10 million or a hundred million dollar business. If I am doing it, Do it I, yep. just, I can't be writing the content. I can't be spending all my time doing podcasts and YouTube videos. Um, I, 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 I need to really get serious about how do I scale this thing, right? And so I look at examples like, um, 
you know, Kyle Taylor over at the, the Penny Hoarder, um, WP Beginner, um, and, and some of those websites where the founders are not writing any of the content. They've scaled up a really large content team. Um, they're doing a great job with SEO. Um, and I, I'd like to replicate that, right? Um, and I'm sort of in the early stages now of, of hopefully replicating that growth strategy where I double down on, on written content, email, and you know, social media a little bit. So, so we're recording this at the, at the end of 2021. And mm -hmm. I, I did not know prior to just, you know, just today that you had kind of written this blog post talking about these goals for 2021. And here we are. It sounds like you've checked a lot of the boxes off for that goal for 2021. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, you know, um, in terms of attempting to remove myself, yes, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I've definitely done that. I have some other goals in terms of traffic and earnings. I didn't quite hit those goals. Um but I'm getting there. I, I, a lot happened in uh, 2021. Um, I didn't scale things quite as much as I had hoped, yep. right? I sort of meandered a little bit, focused on Link Whisper for six months out of the year. And that was a good thing yep. um, for sure. Um, but I'm over the last couple of months, I'm finally back to, okay, this is the original goal. Jared's now successfully transitioned as the host here on the podcast. Can I scale the team and the content and really grow the traffic on niche pursuits now? And, and I'm starting to, to double down on that again. And it's, uh, it's working. All right. Well, um, as we kind of near the end here, I mean, 2022, are we going to, are we going to see you around on the podcast at all? Or is this, uh, is this your, is this your farewell? Is this the farewell? <laughs> I don't even know myself. I'm kind of asking in curiosity. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be okay. back. I think okay. I will be back. Um, yeah, you know, no, we didn't get to talk about some of the stuff that I know you've talked historically about here and there on the podcast before, you know, own the yard. Um, we didn't get to talk about that and, and some of the other websites, but yeah, so there's definitely some things we could talk about in another one of these uh, in the future. Yeah, no, I think that would make a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's good. I, I don't want to be gone forever. Right. Um, I don't think it hurts me to come back and remind people who I am and introduce myself to people that don't know who I am anymore, uh -huh. I was gonna say. Um, which would be great. I would love the audience to grow and most people not know who I am. Uh, honestly, that would be like my end goal and a dream is like have this massive business and nobody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, most massive businesses, people don't know who the founder is. Yep. Um, you know, it's only sort of in this certain influencer space that the influencer is the business. Um, so I, I hope to come back, you know, when that is, um, I don't know, maybe we can make this a regular recurring thing. Well, Spencer, it's, I don't know. We have a pretty packed schedule coming up, so I don't know. We'll, we'll try to work you in. We'll see if we can work you in. I, yeah. I, no promises though. Let's, uh, let's be, let's be honest. No, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I think that'd be a lot of fun if we could do this again. <laughs> uh, no, I agree. Um, you know, I, there's a lot to talk about and specifically with, uh, the niche site project Four. yep. Um, I talked about a couple other sites that I acquired three years ago and, you know, I'm trying to exit all those businesses. Um, there's, there's been some things in the works, you know, discussions in terms of, you know, selling assets, um, and things starting to happen that would probably make sense to come back on and, and discuss those. Um, and of course, to give a recap on niche site project four, I think it's been at least a few months since I've even talked about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, I think it, so. It, it probably would make sense to come back here and, you know, maybe early in the new year and, and talk about that. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I think obviously for new listeners, they might not have followed along in that journey quite as, quite as closely, but certainly a lot of longtime listeners follow, you know, I, I know those niche site project kind of case studies are really popular with the most recent one being uh, niche site project four, which is on the yard.com. And um, uh, I mean, there were, that was a, that was a lot of the content on the podcast for um, maybe a good year or so, you know, where we talked about, or you talked about its growth, what you were doing to grow it and that sort of thing. So I think that update would be really, really well-timed uh, when we hit 2022. Yeah. And so I actually have a question for you, Jared, um, just, as as a reader of niche pursuits, a follower of niche pursuits for several years, like you said, 
what do you think of some of the changes that I made? And, and maybe let's not talk about the podcast specifically, because I don't want you to, you know, you're doing the podcast. So let's not talk about that, but <laughs> I'll plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what do you think about the changes knowing that, Hey, Spencer isn't going to be writing all the content on niche pursuits and he's going to be scaling the content with other writers. He's not really the face of the blog itself. Um, how does that make you feel as a reader? Like just honestly, uh, just fine. Uh, just fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's it, like it, if you're being honest and I think the majority of people would feel this way, this is how I feel. There's, there's, there's definitely two things that happen with uh, an interaction like niche pursuits. There's the, um, there's the connection that, that someone has to, to you, but there's also the connection that someone has to the content, to the value it's providing, to the things that they're learning, and to the, the role that it's kind of serving in their individual growth. And I know for me, if at the end of the day, things like the website, the email, the podcast, if those continue to provide value, it's less important to me if there's a specific person behind it, you know? Right. And, you know, um, so I still get the emails every week and I still enjoy them every week. As a matter of fact, I haven't really thought about it. You could argue maybe I enjoy them even more because, you know, you're able to put more time and effort into them and stuff. So I think it's great. I think at the end of the day, the vast majority of people are going to judge it by, hey, what's the value that the, the podcast is bringing? What's the value of these this content I'm finding on the website and stuff like that? And so I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. Because because that is... Um something that makes me nervous still, right? Like yeah. the, the, the one step was removing myself from the podcast and the YouTube. Uh, that was something that, you know, like I said, I didn't 100% enjoy. Um, but when I look at myself, I started as a blogger and writing is something that I enjoyed, right? Like I would love sitting down and documenting my journey and sharing, you know, here's what's working well on my niche sites and writing those blog posts. And so in a way it's harder to remove myself from the blog than, than it has been from the podcast. Um, and so, you know, I guess I'm just looking for reassurance that the yeah, readers I've, are still going to read, right? Yeah, and, I've been on niche pursuits recently and I've noticed, oh, that's a different guest or not guest author. I mean, look at how I'm referring to them, right? Like there yeah. is a knee jerk reaction that says, okay, I'm noticing this article isn't by Spencer. Um, I still read it. Yeah. I still got value out of it. And at the end of the day, that's why I'm there. I'm there to get value. Like if it had your name on it, but the article didn't help me, then it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be yeah. getting the value I need. I got the value I wanted and I needed and stuff. So I, I think it's great. And if it allows you to give more value, you know, if it allows the podcast to continue and I continue to get more value on the website, um, I, I, I think it's, I think it's called winning. Cool. Yeah. Now that sounds good. So I don't know any other questions that you think listeners would want to know as it relates to, you know, we talked a lot, a lot of things, right. Um, sort of how I'm scaling down, getting rid of a lot of distractions. You know, I've been selling businesses and so I can kind of have less to focus on. Um, and then the, the other, I guess, topic, yeah, is just removing myself from the business and kind of how I've operated. But um, I don't know anything else you think listeners would want to, I think it's great. I think it's great that we got to just sit down and have and hear from you kind of the backstory behind it um, and hear the the reasons behind it, hear you explain from your heart about it. You know, I mean, whether you, uh, you know, want to dive deep into it or not, like there is a connection that a lot of listeners are, and, and readers are going to have with you for someone who's provided a lot of value over the years. And so, um, you know, just knowing where you're at and where you're going, I think is really, really valuable. Um, Sounds like the podcast isn't ending, so that's good. I still have a, a role to play going forward. But <laughs> no, people can expect lots of content to come um, on the podcast. Obviously, the website's being doubled down on. And then, um, uh, you know, knowing that you're not uh, disappearing off into the sunset. Right. I mean, yeah, that would be a bad thing. You know, sunsets are beautiful. We could talk about which island you chose to live on. But no, yeah. you're, 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 you're alive and active and well. It's just a reprioritization. And hearing why, I think, again, I, I brought it up in the beginning, but there's so much value for everyone to hear it, whether you're sitting, um, you know, working on your website and you have a full-time job and you only have one hour per night that you can focus on it. The same exact thought process applies, you know, just because, you know, you don't have 10 or 11 projects in the queue like you had, and you had to pare down literal projects, but if you only have one hour a day to spend growing your website, 
where do you have maximum effectiveness? You know, and I, I, to me, that's the real value. It's a good reminder for me. I mean, I run, a, I run an agency and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, where am I too involved in my own business? So hopefully that's a lot of what people will take from the day at the, at, 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 at you know, when you boil it down, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, spend a lot of time thinking about bottlenecks, you know, where am I a bottleneck or where do my authors have a bottleneck? What, you know, in the process, how can I fix that? Uh, but then also thinking about, you know, what's my end goal? Where do, where do I want to be mm -hmm. in two or three years? And how can I get there? How can I quickly get there? Right. And so I spend a lot of time with my, you know, calculator, I'll pull it up and I'll calculate, well, I need to invest this much per article if I'm not going to be writing. And if I want to have X number of articles in a year, I need to spend this much. And am I willing to make that investment in order to hit this big goal that maybe I have in a couple of years? And so as people think about their business, you know, just be very realistic with, I need to either put a 40 hours a week in focusing mm -hmm. on this one thing uh, or B, I need to invest this much money to build up a team and a process that's going to make it happen. So I only have to spend 20 hours a week, you know, focusing on that business or whatever it is. Right. Uh, and so I, I do a lot of that and I don't have all the answers, but this kind of gives a live view of me in the middle of it. Right. I've made some changes and I'm, continue to make changes to kind of, um, you know, strategically make those moves that I need to make. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Um, I'm still excited to, um, you know, be on the podcast here. I expect I'll be back on the podcast so people don't forget my voice. Um, you know, this, this has been fun. We can chat, you know, like I said, maybe here in another month or so. And uh, down the road, maybe we'll do it some more often, but I'll, I'll continue to write some blog posts. I'm going to give my updates. I'm writing the emails, right? So I'm still around. I'm just not doing every single thing in the business anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it, it's, I think 2021, it was a bold move for you to kind of do these kind of things. And again, look at, look at, uh, you know, you, you thought it through clearly. And um, it's um, it's paying off dividends already. I think it's I think it's great. I think it's a great way to to kind of sum up today's conversation. And um, and you know, Spencer, thanks for being a guest on your own podcast. We, <laughs> we appreciated having you. Yeah, it's you know, this is the easiest guest spot I've ever had. I think. <laughs> well, good. Well, until next time. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Jared. It's been great being here. Good to see everybody. Thanks again. <laughs>